Hey there everyone, so let's take some time here to discuss what exactly happened at BlizzCon because honestly this year's BlizzCon has me especially hyped up. And after BlizzCon's closing, my sisters and I all found ourselves resubscribing to World of Warcraft. So let's talk about what happened and why we decided to make this decision. So I'm going to get this big announcement out of the way right off the bat, because as you've probably heard by now, the next World of Warcraft expansion has been announced and, oh my god, it looks very good. Now, I'm not talking about that cinematic CGI stuff and whatnot, because that did look good, but I'm specifically talking about the premise of the new expansion, because I have been hoping for basically the entirety of my 10-year quote-unquote career playing Warcraft, that an expansion would come in and focus on the conflict between the Alliance and the Horde. So trust me when I say that I am beyond excited for this to come out, like it cannot come soon enough. But on top of this major bomb drop, there are also a lot of smaller announcements for World of Warcraft that I am just as excited to see them implement in the game. So what exactly are these smaller announcements? So let's discuss them. First, and just to get this out of the way, the Legacy community did it! Yeah, okay, so Blizzard is finally going to support Legacy servers, which is pretty much like really far overdue. Luckily, people like Elysium have existed prior, but these servers are going to be by Blizzard themselves, and they're going to be the vanilla experience. As of the time of posting this video, if they decide they want to change it, that'll be at a later date. Now, these servers are going to service the Legacy community, and let's be honest, the Legacy community has been given the short end of the stick for a long time. But, that whole Legacy announcement is just the tip of this iceberg, so let's talk about the other stuff that's going to happen in retail. Now, there's a variety of changes that are going to be coming to retail, but a change that is actually going to come out prior to the next expansion launch is that Blizzard is finally going to fix the whole leveling issue. Now, as all of you are probably aware, if you were to go and try to quest in zones, you are very quickly out-leveling the monsters that dwell there. And that makes your questing experience lackluster at best, like, really bad. But Blizzard has said that they have looked into this, and to fix this, they are going to utilize a system that they used in Legion, but a little bit different. Now, they don't want to have the boars standing outside of Orgrimmar be level 110 with you, but they do want to have the leveling players get the story out of the zones without being five levels higher than the creatures that are there. So, they're going to expand the level brackets and then have the creatures level with you up until the ending of those leveling brackets. Now, this is great. The larger gaps solve the problem that altaholics like myself have experienced time and time again. And I'm very excited to see this change and I'm ready to get back into the world and quest and actually do the content with some level of difficulty. Now let's move to the coverage of the actual new expansion itself. There's a lot to cover here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover each relatively fast and then put links in the description to people that have covered this in a lot more detail than I have. Now, first off I want to talk about sub-races, because Blizzard is going to be putting in six new races into our game that are very heavily inspired by races that already exist. Now, things like High Mountain Torin or Light Touch Draenei. Now that's pretty high level of inspiration if you ask me, but if all of this is true, this new race change coupled with the leveling change I talked about like a minute ago uh, is pretty neat and you can bet that I will be leveling some sub races because they look pretty cool. Number two, Island Exploration Stuff. So for new endgame content, they're adding into the game scenarios that you can go and explore with three people. Now, these scenarios are very similar to the ones that they implemented in Mists of Pandaland. Now, this is great because there are, again, three players. And the three-player experience, I am always happy to see get improved because I often play in groups of three. And I personally will probably be using this feature a lot. Now. On the other great side of this, it seems like there's going to be near infinite 
amount of these scenarios because they're apparently always going to be different in some way or another. This is really great because it'll never really feel old and repetitive in theory. Now, if that's true, that's awesome because we all know what dungeon fatigue feels like. Anyway, Bellular, 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 I don't know, covered this, so I'm going to link to his video for this one. Three, Warfronts. So, if getting one new form of this endgame content didn't quite get you going enough, don't worry. They've actually announced that there's supposedly another form of endgame content coming. Warfronts are supposedly going to be 20 player PvE style scenarios that basically seem to mimic the progression style done in a typical Warcraft 3 level. So like building up a base and then taking out the enemy. These all focus on the Alliance vs Horde conflicts and once again, I am so excited for this expansion. Alliance vs Horde conflict is my f now, the final thing I'm going to discuss here in this video is the changes coming to the Warcraft servers themselves, because it's actually pretty neat. Basically, the PvP and PvE tags are going to be removed from the servers, and players are instead going to be able to opt in and out of World PvP. By opting in, you're going to get phased into a new realm where the like-minded individuals are going to be present and ready to rumble. Once again, my hype for this is uncontained. When I'm leveling on a PvP server and I have to be flagged in Outland, I won't get like destroyed every two seconds because people at max level have nothing better to do with their lives than to kill level 60s. Now of course there's a lot more that I could cover here but this video is already getting a little long. But these are the things that I am the most passionate about. If you want more information on this stuff, Bellular made a great series of videos on the BlizzCode announcements, so I'm going to link to his channel in my description here in case for some reason you just haven't heard of him. Now, to conclude this video, I have a poll question to ask you. Will you be representing the Alliance or the Horde in the new expansion? Vote in the poll by clicking the I in the top right corner of the screen, and then explain your loyalty in the comments down below. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some leveling to get done. I hope you're all excited as I am for this new expansion to come out. Anyways, this is Celtic. Subscribe for more content, and have a casual day.